Have you ever looked at a computer and wondered, what is going on in there? Like, how does my computer work in such a way that it can perform virtually any operation and connect to user devices like a keyboard and a screen? How can a computer turn ones and zeros into actual runnable programs? Well, you're about to find out. Hello, I'm Jack from Paper Games Productions, and this is my informational series on how computers work. This is Understanding Computer Science. Episode 1, The Language of Computers. Most people, when they think of computers, think of ones and zeros, and that's mostly correct. Computer hardware can't directly store much. Each piece of memory on the computer can only be either on or off, high or low, one or zero. These pieces of memory are called bits, and there's a lot of them. Therefore, memory is often divided into 8-bit chunks called bytes. These can hold up to 2 to the 8, or 256 possible values for every configuration of the 8 bits. But when I say value, that doesn't necessarily mean number. A byte could be a number, or it could be an ASCII character, a location in memory, an instruction for the processor, or it could just be 8 independent bits. And don't worry, I'll get into what those things mean later. Just know that when I say byte, it doesn't necessarily mean a number. Even so, we can still represent bytes with numbers. Let's say we have the byte 01101011. If we start counting at zero and interpret bits on the right to be less significant, meaning changing them doesn't change our representing number as much, then we can assign every combination of bits as a number. In this case, 107. However, having the numbers be in base 10 is often quite clunky and not very useful. More often than not, you'll want to represent bytes in a base that is a power of 2. What that essentially means is that each slot of the number can hold a different amount of digits than 0 to 9. For example, in octal, you would have digits 0 to 8. Or, in the very popular hexadecimal, which I'll just abbreviate as hex from here on out, you can have 16 digits. Now, since we only have 10 digits normally, the digits for 10 through 15 are represented with letters A through F in hex. For our example number, it can be represented in hex by 6B. From now on, I will refer to bytes by their hex representation when applicable. Now, let's talk about where all these bytes are stored. Not all memory is created equal after all. To start with, your hard drive or CD drive stores all your files and programs but isn't actually read. It has to be loaded into primary memory first. For older computers, this would mean physically inserting a CD, but now it all happens automatically. These programs are loaded into a place called ROM, or read-only memory. This is where the processor will try to read programs from. As the name suggests, it cannot be written to under normal circumstances, so that the processor won't try to overwrite the program it's currently running. But if you do want to write information, you have RAM, or Random Access Memory, which can be written to. RAM stores important information and variables for other programs, or even entire programs, that only need to be loaded for a short time. Finally, there's the registry, which holds just a few really important pieces of information, like the current byte the processor is trying to run, as well as a few other things. The next thing you need to know about are memory addresses. Of all the different things that a byte could represent, the by far most common is another location in memory. All locations in memory are represented by some value. A single byte can hold 256 possible values, and this is what we would call an 8-bit system. That's kind of a pitiful amount of space though, so to get more space, we can simply use more bytes to define the location in memory. Two bytes gets us a 16-bit system with 65,536 possible memory addresses. Four bytes gets us a 32-bit system with over 4.2 million possible memory addresses. And eight bytes gets us the commonly used 64-bit system with over 18.4 quintillion possible memory addresses. Quintillion is 18 zeros, by the way. And considering most processors are still running in the millions of instructions per second range, that will be plenty. Finally, I have covered enough to explain the actual instructions themselves. When a processor boots up and starts looking through ROM, it's going to look for instructions called operation codes, or opcodes. 
So let's say the processor finds hex 6b again. What's it going to do? Well, it depends on the specific processor you're using, but most are pretty similar. So for the sake of simplicity, I'll be using Intel 64-bit opcode manual. In this case, the opcode 6b corresponds to signed multiplication. The processor will take the eight bytes after the instruction and interpret them as two 64-bit memory addresses in RAM. It will then find the two bytes at those locations and send them to the logic processor to be multiplied. I'll explain how the logic processor works in another video, but for now, all you need to know is that the processor gives it these two values, interpreted as positive or negative integers, as dictated by sign multiplication, and finds their product. For example, if it read negative 108 and 72, it would get negative 7776. Now the processor will replace the first memory address it read with the result. But wait, there's a problem. The result is too big to fit in just the one byte. Negative 7776 is 16 bits long in binary, so the top 8 have to be truncated, resulting in negative 96 getting written instead. There are of course other operations that will interpret the memory location as a set of 4 bytes, which will allow for much bigger numbers, up to 4.2 million or even bigger using lossy variable types like floats, but I'll cover them another time. Now that the processor has finished executing, it skips over the two addresses and reads the next instruction. For most processors, they can handle millions of these instructions per second, and while they are simple in and of themselves, together they can do truly complex things. Okay, let's review. Computers store information in bits which can be either 0 or 1. Groups of 8 bits make bytes, which can represent values, instructions, and memory addresses, and groups of bytes can give even bigger values. The processor loads programs from the CD drive into ROM, which can manipulate values in RAM. Every byte corresponds to a specific instruction which tells the processor what to do, and after doing millions of these instructions per second, the processor can run just about anything. If you enjoy this kind of content, make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. That'll let me know you'd like to see more content like this in the future. Additionally, if you have any ideas for future videos, feel free to leave a comment and tell me how I did. Either way, I've been Jack, this has been Understanding Computer Science, and I hope you have a fantastic day.